you're live. Hello, 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 my friends. Danny Spees, Clean and Delicious. It has been a while since we've done one of these lives, so I'm super excited to be with you all here today, making one of. Hang on. Video here for me. Basically, anything. Okay, sorry about that. Making one of my favorite kale salads. Now, if you've been watching for a while, um, say hello in the comments. Let me know where you're watching from, and even if you've never been here before. Do the same because I'm always curious to connect with you guys. I know we come from all over the world, which is super exciting. Now, this is a salad that would be beautiful on a holiday table because it's got pomegranates and pecans, so it brings all of those warm, um, uh, the pecans to me are like a nice warm fall, uh, like spiced nut, and the pomegranates are in season, so it's just gorge. Okay, so let's jump in, shall we? Now, the first thing you want to do when you're making a kale salad is prep your kale. I already washed my kale because I didn't want to spend too much time doing that. So I washed it, I put it into a salad spinner, and then what I like to do before it goes in the salad spinner, I saved a few, is you want to take the stem of the kale off. That's the thick part that runs right down the middle here. So you just pull up and away. And that, my friends, is the easiest way to stem your kale. We'll do it one more time. So you grab the bottom of the stem, you pull up and away, and you grab the stem and the leaf. Up and away. Then from here, what I do is I get it all into a salad spinner. I'll bring this right over here. And let me pop the lid on. I love using this anytime I make a salad. It pulls all the water off of the green. You just push down on the top. Spins and now see how all the water is being pulled off to the side? That is what you want when you're making a salad. The problem is, is if you let your greens be very wet, then the salad dressing won't adhere to the greens because it's that whole oil and water thing, right? They don't like each other. So you want to have the water off of the greens so that when you dress the salad, the dressing adheres to the greens. So then from there, what I do is I take them out of the salad spinner and I usually just kind of roll them in a really um, unorganized way. I just kind of pull them together and get them in a little bunch. And then you're just going to slice I like it as thin as possible. So it's almost like you're slicing into ribbons, except it's not an official ribbon because we didn't officially roll the kale. I just kind of bunch it up and go. And if you want it a little smaller, you just go right back ahead the other way. So let me get my ball. Now, can you see anybody tuning in? Yeah. Cool. Let me see what we got here. I'm trying, this is our first time. I'm trying to get the- We haven't done the YouTube Live ever. Do we ever do YouTube? That's a good question. I don't know why I'm trying to get these uh, comments up, but we have people saying hi. We have Frank and Pam from Michigan, Josephine, some people from India, hey guys, Belgium, for, Portugal. Thanks for joining with me. Give me a big uh, thumbs up if anybody went out and bought the ingredients and are actually going to be doing this with me. Because if you guys are subscribed to the newsletter, I sent all of the um, the, re the link to the recipe. So you could have, we could be doing this together. Okay, so get all the kale into the bowl. Let's chat kale for just a second. Um, I think one of the best, most fun ways to think about kale and how it's good for you is that kale is loaded with chlorophyll, right? Chlorophyll is, it's the green, it's what's in trees, it's what's in leaves, right? It's what gives it that dark leafy green color. And the beauty of chlorophyll is it's a natural detoxifier. So I always think of it like think about um, how trees clean the air. Well, when you're eating kale, it's doing that in your body. It's like a filter and a cleaner and a cleanser for your body. It's automatically helping to support your body, um, get rid of any toxins and keep the system nice and clean. So it's a fun way to think about it. Um, and that goes for any dark leafy green. Okay, so once you have all your kale in the bowl, we're gonna add a few of our add-ins. But what I really want you guys to see is some of the little tricks I use to make this easier, okay? So we're gonna be adding fresh pomegranate seeds, and this is the way the pomegranate looks at the grocery store when you buy it, right? When you look for pomegranates, you want to look for a pomegranate that when you lift it up, it feels heavy for its size. 
And the reason you want it to be heavy for its size is because that means that they're juicy, right? If it's nice and juicy and it has a lot of um, liquid in there, it's gonna feel heavy. If you pick it up and it feels super light, chances are it's a little dried out or it's just not gonna be the juiciest pomegranate. Um, so, I had a bowl of water. Let me grab my water. Is that clean? Yeah, I just filled it up with okay. cold water. I may have done. We're gonna do two things at the same time here. So what I'm gonna do also is I wanna heat up um, just a small saute pan back here. I'm gonna get it on a really low heat. I just want the, the pan to warm up because we're also gonna toast some pecans to give them a little extra depth of flavor. So when you buy a pomegranate, it's gonna come like this. All the seeds are in there. And I know a lot of people don't wanna buy them because it feels like a lot of work to get them out, but I have found the easiest way to do this without getting pomegranates all over it is you score the outside of the pomegranate. So we're gonna score it into fourths, right? I literally just run my knife in here. In a, in a perfect world, we would not go deep enough to actually cut any of the pomegranate seeds, but that does not always happen. The only reason you wanna avoid them is because you don't wanna make a mess because pomegranate juice will stain your clothes and your cutting boards and your fingers. So this is one of the neatest ways that I have learned to cut a pomegranate. So you, I'm just scoring it all about four. Just so you know, you get people from Belgium, Phil what? Philly, uh, Queens. That is amazing. Thank you all so much uh, for joining, it's so fun. You have a lady named Queens, Queen from Baltimore, I believe, right? Is that right, Queen? Love Queen that. Love, something like that? She's in Baltimore. Hey, Queen. Okay, so Sweden. Once you've got the palm, hello everybody. I love, I love it. Thank you for sharing that. So once you've got it cut into fours like this, see it's just scored. I did not cut through. You bring it down into the water or close to it. You really want to kind of submerge it and gently pull it apart. Well, and the only reason mine is not working is because I didn't go deep enough. So you're going just enough to cut that outer skin. Okay, then you want to get it into the water and you just gently see how easily it comes apart. And then all of the seeds are in here, and this is the membrane. So we want to separate the seeds from the membrane, and it's actually very easy to do. So again, I like to go into, into quarters. Sorry, I go to where I scored it, and you can see it pops right apart. And then if you do this in the water, when you crack it open like this, none of the seeds, none of the juice flies out. You don't get it all over yourself. So the key is I just use my thumb, and watch, like all I'm doing is like this under the water. They come out so easily, they just loosely come right out. Could you do this out of the water? Of course you could, but if you're worried about like a mess and you don't want to get everything everywhere, do it this way and honestly, I would even do a bowl just a little bit bigger. Mine's, I'm cutting it a little tight here. Okay, and then what you'll see is that all the pomegranate seeds will fall to the bottom. You can lift them up or once you're all done, you could take this whole pan, the whole bowl and just strain it out. You need about a cup of pomegranate seeds, okay? Okay, so let's set that aside and let's talk about the pecans. You could do any nut you prefer. Let's do this over at the stove. You could do any nut you prefer. Personally, around the holidays, I know I'm a little early, but with the holidays, pecans are my favorite nut. They just remind me of Thanksgiving and Christmas. So the, all you have to do to toast nuts is you warm your pan up. No oil, no butter, nothing. And you just add the pans. The, the pecan. pecans, thank you. You just add the pecans to the dry hot pan. That is all you're gonna do. I let them sit there a minute or so and then- Small flame, guys. Yeah, you, yeah, keep it small because what happens is once it gets hot, once those nuts start to heat up, it goes really fast. Someone wants to know if the water, when you do the uh, pomegranate that way, if it's going to, what did you say? Uh, dilute the flavor of the pomegranate. By no, not at all, because you have to remember the pomegranates, each little um, aerial, I think these are called, um, the juice is inside there. So they almost have the flavor, they have like a little coating around each little juicy. So the flavor's set. on the inside, so it's not effective. Yeah, so when you bite into that, it's kind of like, mm, like explodes in your mouth. So you're not going to dilute the flavor at all because actually the flavor is inside of each one of these. So no, definitely not a problem. Okay. So what I do is I like just gently shake the nuts around. You can just toss them in the pan like this, or if you're not a tosser, you can just use a spatula and toss around like this. Okay, we're gonna let these go. This literally takes about five minutes, and the way I'm gonna know 
that the nuts are just about ready is they get really fragrant. And once they start to get fragrant, give them a couple tosses, you'll see they'll start to lightly brown, and then we're gonna get them right off the heat because once they start to go, they go really fast. So we're gonna head on back over here. Okay, if there are any questions that come in, let me know because we can chat and answer them as we go. Okay. Could you use walnuts instead? Definitely, you could use walnuts. You could use any nut that you have on hand or that you prefer. How about a seed? What about, are you? Okay. Yeah, we're actually gonna be using sunflower seeds too. If you Pumpkin cannot seed? do nuts, I was just about to say that. Pumpkin seeds and sunflower seeds together would be amazing. So I'm just gonna give this a little toss. Okay, so then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add the pomegranate seeds into, onto the top of the salad. We are going to add about a quarter cup of roasted and salted sunflower seeds. Now these I bought roasted and salted, so they are already ready to go. And oh, M to the G, they add so much flavor when they're roasted and salted like that, they're so delicious. And then once our pecans are ready, we're gonna chop them up and get them in there as well. Is this, a, is this dinosaur kale? What kind of kale is that? Nope, this is just a regular um, curly kale. Can I use any kale? You can use any kale that you have. I recommend looking for what looks like the most vibrant, youngest, most tender kale leaves, right? Because then you really don't need to do much to it. A lot of times you'll see people will massage the kale or they'll salt the kale first and rub it down to help um, tenderize it. But my kale was so young and so fresh that it really does not need that to be done, which is why I didn't do that. And guys, I'm sorry if some of the sound is a little bit low. I'll, I'm gonna work on that before we go back and do this again. I don't wanna stop the feed now, but I think the mic is on the wrong side of my phone. Okay, can I show you how the nuts have already, you see how they've already browned up, can you see that? See how they're, here, look at this guy. It's got nice brown edges and they're so fragrant. Can you smell them, B? Yeah, it's good. They smell so good. So from here, I just get them onto the cutting board. I personally love the idea of taking a little bit of salt over them right here, just like that, right now. While they're warm, it just kind of infuses a little of that pop into the pecan, and then I go over the top and chop them up. Someone wants to know how you soften kale. So if you had kale and it was not tender, what I would do is I would drizzle it with a little bit of olive oil, give it a sprinkle of kosher salt, and then use your fingers to massage. You've probably heard people talk about massaging kale before. Massage the kale, that will tenderize the leaves, and then, you can add a little bit of citrus to balance out the dressing, right? So if you did the olive oil and the salt, then you'd want to add your vinegar or your lemon juice, and that alone could be enough to dress the kale and make a really great flavor. But that is the key to tenderizing the kale. It's a combination of the salt and the olive oil. Some people even do salt and the lemon juice because they'll do the acid and salt to tenderize it. Um, either one, I find, works and gets the job done. But again, remember, the fresher the kale, the less likely you'll have be to have to do that. Okay, so I've got my pecans roughly chopped here and they smell so good. It is amazing how three minutes in a pan like that can make such a difference. We can see how beautiful this is looking. Okay, and then we are going to make the salad dressing. Now, as you all may or may not know, uh, a base of vinaigrette is usually made three parts oil to one part vinegar. But I personally have always liked a more tart dressing, so I usually go one to one. So I'll do, if I'm doing a quarter cup oil, I do a quarter cup vinegar. Um, and it's a great base, so I always recommend starting there and then adjusting it to your own personal taste buds. So I like to start the salad dressing with one clove of garlic right at the bottom. Easiest way to get your garlic out, knife over the top, did you wanna ask me something? No, somebody else answered it for her. Okay, Thanks. knife over the top of the garlic and straight down and you will see that literally the garlic clove pops right out of the skin that way. Then I'm a big fan of the garlic press, especially for a salad dressing because this almost like juices the garlic and it gets it so small that no one's gonna get stuck with a big chunk of garlic in their mouth, which you definitely don't want when you're eating a salad. All right, so we start with one clove of crushed garlic. Then I'm gonna dice up a little bit of red onion. 
If you didn't have a red onion, you could do a shallot, you could do a white onion. They would all get the job done. What did you just do there? So I just, all right, let's talk about the onion. That's a good idea. This is the root. This piece is the stem. The root is what holds the onion together. So when you're chopping an onion, always start by slicing off the stem end of the onion, lay it flat down, and then over the top to cut it in half, okay? Then what you wanna do is pull off this outer skin. These are the little types of tricks in the kitchen that will save so much time when you get the hang of some of these basics, like chopping an onion. Okay, then what you're gonna do is I'm gonna create like a tic-tac-toe board. So you go in horizontally. The, the more you make, the smaller the cuts will be. I'll go one more. Then I'm gonna come over the top. So we're going vertically, right? So we're basically creating a tic-tac-toe board. Then once you've got that done, you just bring your knife right over the top, slice straight down, and you've got yourself, in this case, a diced onion. If I was making them a little bit bigger, then it would be a chop. So we just need a couple tablespoons of that. And I like to use this in the base of the dressing. Not only does it give flavor, but it give, adds a really great texture. So get that in. And if, you, if you're not a big fan of onion, you could even do a scallion here. Scallions or shallots, they both have a bit of a milder flavor. Let's get this onion out of here because it's gonna make me cry. Woo, that was a strong onion. Are you getting it too? Okay. Okay, so we've got garlic, we've got chopped red onion. Now for our um, dressing. I'm gonna do a quarter cup of extra virgin olive oil. This is when you wanna use your cold pressed extra virgin olive oils. You don't really wanna be heating that oil. It's always best, well, you can cook with it, but your best olive oils, these are the ones you wanna save for your salads. And then, doing equal parts, this onion is killing me, guys. You gotta move it. Sorry. <laughs> okay. And then we're gonna do a quarter cup of apple cider vinegar. I love using apple cider vinegar, especially this time of the year. It just has a really bright, acidic flavor. That apple, to me, it just it's a little bit warmer than a red wine vinegar. Now, not only is it delicious, but remember that apple cider vinegar is so good for you. You just want to make sure that when you buy it on the container, it says with the mother, okay? The mother is the stuff at the bottom that looks a little bit... It's a little murky. Murky, exactly, which you might think is not a good thing, but it's actually a very good thing. That is the bacteria um, from, the, um, from the apples once they have been broken down. The good, the good biotics, and right? And that's the good bacteria. Those are the bacteria that probiotics helps to improve your immunity and strengthen your gut health. So adding apple cider, like who would think being healthy could be so delicious, right? We're just adding, making a delicious salad dressing and we're getting all this good gut bacteria as well. So it's a hashtag win-win. She, she did shake the apple cider vinegar, but it's a, it was a new one a couple days ago and it got real sedimenty at the bottom because we, I bought two of them because they were, I think on sale. So yeah. one got very sedimentary. Well, that's so. a great question. Oh, you could, should get, I probably could have given that a good she shake. She could have given it a little more of a shake. It. So when you are working with it, give it a good shake. And it takes good. all that sediment yeah, off the bottom. It makes it very murky though. Yeah, it comes all off. So good tip, my friend. Thank you. Okay. Um, and then the last thing I do for the salad dressing is I just add about a tablespoon of honey. That's just going to round it out a little bit. It just takes the acidic edge off a little bit. Um, and it rounds all of the flavors. Okay, so we'll get that in there. We'll give it a nice fat pinch of salt and pepper. And there's one thing that always sticks. I remember years ago, I did a, a cooking school for home cooks. And I remember learning that they always said, make sure that when you salt and pepper your salad dressing, that you are generous because you are not just flavoring this half a cup of salad dressing. You're actually flavoring this entire bowl of salad. So don't be afraid to really add a lot of flavor to the dressing because it's gonna infuse the entire salad. Okay. And when you put it. onions in the, the dressing, you have to make sure they're really fine, right? Because otherwise they get super... Yeah, that's why I like to dice them instead of chopping them. So I keep them really small. But it does add a great texture to the salad. Okay, so once that's done... Can you recap that? Recap the ingredients real quick on For it? the salad dressing? Yeah. Yeah, so we had one clove of crushed garlic, 
a few tablespoons of finely diced red onion, and then equal parts apple cider vinegar and extra virgin olive oil with about a tablespoon of honey, some salt and pepper. It's a really good flavor. Mm. Mm, 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 mm. That is delightful. Okay. You don't need to add lemon in this. Vin is vinegar is enough, right? Yes. The, let's drizzle this over the top. The vinegar is plenty of acid, but if you didn't have vinegar, you could certainly swap it out with lemon juice and that would be absolutely delicious. So I get the dressing over the top and then I like to use a tong. You could also use your fingers to start to mix this all together. Now, my dear friends, if you were bringing this to a party, I wouldn't dress it until I got there. I would assemble it, get everything ready to go, and then right before you serve it, add the dressing. And you, you really want to do what I'm doing right now because it may not look like a lot of dressing when it goes over the top, but as you start to work it in, it's like the perfect amount to coat the kale leaves without leaving it like soppy wet at the bottom. So from here, I would grab a serving bowl, okay? And then we're gonna start to get the salad into the bowl. You're gonna see that too, this is really is one of the most beautiful salads. It really is gorgeous on a holiday table, but of course, equally as delicious for dinner on a Sunday night, or if you wanted to make yourself a little meal prep and bring lunch to work, this would be insanely delicious. You know what I love on this salad is um, salmon, right? Like if we were just mm -hmm. gonna make it for dinner, doing it with some like pan seared salmon or um, salmon in the cast iron skillet is absolutely delicious. Super so hearty. And good. and the, um, the honey replaces any sugar, right? Yeah, there's no additional sugars. You don't need any sugar in this, but I do like that little bit of honey just because it rounds things out. Hang on just a second. Okay, yeah, this, this is one of our favorites. The kids love this too. They, they Actually, my daughter is the one who came, came up, up with, with the idea of putting the pomegranates and the red onion in the salad dress. And Katie, that was her idea when she was like five years old, I remember. She was in the kitchen helping me and I was like, all right, let's just go with it. And it ended up being so delicious that it's like a go-to of mine now. I don't want to overfill this bowl because I want to also give the option. So once you have everything, your serving bowl is ready to go, this is 100% optional. But if you wanted to take it to the next level, I love to buy a block of feta cheese. Um, as you guys know, or I've mentioned before, I always try to buy the block. It always has better flavor and it's creamier because there's no anti caking agents or anything in there. Um, so you would just sprinkle this right over the top. Not only does the color look beautiful, but it adds like a creamy, tangy yeah. texture that is- This is so Christmassy. So, yeah, it's also beautiful on the Thanksgiving table. Okay, bum, 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 bum. How beautiful is that and how easy is that? You will make yourself the superstar of the holiday table. I gotta rinse my hands. Yeah, we eat this. This is our go-to holiday salad and, and literally you, it becomes the star of the show very fast. Really does, right? Yeah. Okay, so I hope you guys enjoyed this. I hope you enjoyed the recipe. I feel like I should just take a quick bite because it, I feel like I'd be doing a disservice if I didn't taste it. Y'all know that's my favorite part of the job. Okay, let's go ahead and stick that on top. All right, one, two, three. Mm. 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 So good. Oh, that's so good. The flavors are perfectly balanced. And the pomegranate is like a little pop in your mouth with the warm, nutty pecan. I really am excited for you guys to try this one and let me know what you think. I linked to the recipe down in the description box below. Remember, all the comments that are in the chat section, they won't stick around. So if you wanna maybe make any suggestions for recipes that you wanna see coming up, come on down to the comment section after we end the live and put it down there and I'll make sure to uh, read through all of them and take them into account. Thank you all so much for watching. I am Danny Spees and I'll see you back here next time with some more clean and deliciousness. Cheers. Thanks guys. This is so good.